الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My beloved brothers and sisters the first and the most important piece of advice that we always share with one another to remind one another is to continue in the development of our relationship with our maker in the way in a way that when we meet him we will be happy about the striving that we had engaged in throughout our lives and he will be happy upon the fact that we kept trying to be better people and to develop our relationship with him it is termed taqwa allah which is referred to as the consciousness of the almighty some say the fear of allah but in fact it is to create a barrier between yourself and the wrath of the almighty by fulfilling the obligations upon you and abstaining from the prohibitions knowing that anything that is prohibited is actually detrimental for you and I both in this world and the next so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make easy for us the path in this beautiful world and we ask the almighty to grant us salvation on the day of judgment and we ask him to grant us the most beautiful garden from the gardens of paradise jannatul firdaus amin my brothers and sisters as we see what is going on around us all the time we face so many challenges as human beings in a world that is not perfect we are in fact not perfect perfection belongs only and solely to allah allah is the perfect this is why those who want to be perfect or want others to be perfect completely at times they trample on the toes of others and make their lives a misery so understand you are not perfect nor am i nothing besides allah is absolutely perfect the closest example to perfection is that of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a prophet of allah he was granted that level of perfection that no other was granted because he was chosen to be the greatest of all the most noble of all prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send blessings and salutations upon him and all the other prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you will notice across the globe a lot happening that will sadden you it saddens all of us we see negativity in fact it comes so close that we see negativity in our own homes we have situations whereby we have disagreements with our children with our parents with our siblings with our spouses yet we love them so much we have these disagreements whereby life sometimes becomes a misery and at times the person causing this could be a loved one doing it with a good intention not knowing the amount of damage and harm he or she may be causing to the other may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those who lose the consciousness of what impact our words and statements have on those we interact with amen my brothers and sisters that having been said you and i know that part of not being perfect is that we will falter and sin now and again none of us can claim that he or she has no sin because again we are not perfect kullu bani adam khata the prophet peace be upon him says all humankind 
will make mistakes, they will sin, they will err. And the best of those who err and who make mistakes are those who constantly seek forgiveness. So all of us, to know our value, we need to ask ourselves, how much do I seek forgiveness of the Almighty? How often do I seek the forgiveness of the Almighty? The answer of that will determine your closeness or distance from the Almighty. Never look at another and think that you are holier than them or more pious because you never know what the next step in your life is holding for you and what the next step for them is holding. Yours could drop you into a pit and theirs could be a staircase leading them to heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and forgiveness. I want to share with you today on this beautiful day at such a beautiful time with such a lovely house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're in with so much of tranquility and peace, with the love that we have for one another, irrespective of our races, irrespective of our financial standing, irrespective of so many other factors. Look at us seated here. Let's listen to something beautiful. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us, and this is a narration narrated by one of his companions, who was with him for a long time, known as Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. He says, the Prophet peace be upon him said, that Allah Almighty has said. Now this is something powerful because usually you would hear verses of the Quran. Yes, indeed, that's the most powerful. That's the word of Allah. You can recite that in your prayer. When it comes to the hadith or the statement of the Prophet, the Prophet peace be upon him. If we were told the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, it is a powerful statement indeed. But for him to say, Allah has said, it raises it one level higher, one notch higher, and it's now termed Hadith Qudsi, which means, listen up everyone, this is what Allah is telling you. So a lot of people look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think that he is merciless. They think that he is only punishing people. He is only interested in casting people in hellfire. He's only interested in making people's lives difficult, etc., etc. But in actual fact, that is totally wrong. That is the trap of the devil who wants you to think that Allah is void of mercy. Yet, the whole religion is based on mercy. Such mercy that nobody can compete with. If I were to do something bad to you, perhaps you might forgive me. If I were to repeat it a second time and say, I'm sorry, you will forgive me a second. The minute you see me do the same thing three times in a short space of time, and I say, I'm sorry, the third time, even if I'm your son, it will change in your attitude a little bit with the Almighty. The more you seek forgiveness, the more he loves you. Subhanallah. The more he loves you. In fact, at the third time that you seek forgiveness, he tells his angels, oh my angels, do you see this person? Each time he sins, he's asking me for forgiveness, confirming that he firmly believes that I am the owner of forgiveness. I want you all, my beloved angels, to bear witness that I've forgiven him totally. Subhanallah. So why do we lose hope in the mercy of Allah? Why do we look at others and think that they, they do not deserve the mercy of Allah when Allah created you and created them in the same way? If Allah did not want to be merciful upon them, He would not have created them in the first place. So understand, one is to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. The other is to think that others don't deserve the mercy of Allah. Both of those are wrong. And the third is to discourage people making them feel that they are unwanted by Allah. No matter what you've done, my brothers and sisters, let's listen to this hadith. Let me start it off. Allah says, Yabna Adama, O son of Adam. That means, O mankind, because we are sons and children of Adam. O mankind. Now I'm listening all ears. I want to know what Allah is telling me, right? Subhanallah, O son of Adam, for as long as you call out to me, for as long as you are calling out to me, continue calling out to me, and for as long as you have hope in me, I will forgive 
all the sins you've committed and I won't even bother. Subhanallah. This hadith is found in Sunan At-Tirmidhi. Powerful narration. We need to know it. Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, O mankind, for as long as you're calling out to me, me alone, and for as long as you have hope in my mercy and you have hope in me, I will forgive you whatever is coming from you. I'm going to forgive it. Wala ubali. And I don't mind. I am not bothered. I'm not going to lose anything. I'm not going to gain anything. It's you who's going to gain. I'm going to give you from my mercy. Subhanallah. As though that was not merciful enough to move us, Allah continues to reassure us in a different way. Because many of you may have a question right now. What if I've done the worst possible thing? What if I've sinned for so many years? What if I've committed major, 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 major sin? What will happen to me? So Allah says, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك ولا أبالي. O son of Adam, if your sins have reached the skies in amount, if your sins have reached the skies, and you have come to me seeking forgiveness from me, I will wipe them out and I don't bother. I will forgive them and it's okay, no problem. Sometimes when you do something bad, you say, can, can you forgive me please, I was wrong. Your buddy, your friend, your family member might say, okay, I forgive you. But deep down they're holding something. Allah says, no way, with me, I'm, it's okay, it's fine. You, you committed the sin, you sought forgiveness from me. Your sins were reaching the skies. But because you sought that forgiveness, I will forgive you completely. Wala ubali. And I'm not even worried. I'm not even bothered. It's not even going to destroy our relationship. In fact, it's going to build it. As though that was not enough. Do you want to see what else the same hadith says when Allah continues and He's telling that to me? and to you and to everyone else. So don't think there is someone on earth who is far from the mercy of Allah. If you and I would like, all you need to do is seek that mercy from Allah. Seek the mercy from Allah. May Allah forgive all of us. May Allah forgive our sins and grant us steadfastness, make us strong. If that sin happens to be repeated due to human weakness and nature, seek forgiveness again and again. And your sin is your secret between you and Allah. You never have to confess it to anyone besides your maker alone. You tell your maker what you've done. You admit your sin. You, you regret it. You seek forgiveness and you promise him you're not going to do it again. With those four conditions, no matter what you've done is totally wiped out. Gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his mercy. Amen. So the hadith, the last part of it, he says, Ya ibn Adama, in laqeetani, if you come to me on the day of judgment, if you come to me on the day of judgment, bi qurabil ardi khataya, with an equivalent amount of the entire earth filled with sin, thumma laqeetani la tushriku bi shay'an, he says, if you have come on the day of judgment, now this is not talking about seeking forgiveness. This is talking about something unique beyond that. Say someone has died, right? And they did, they, they did not seek forgiveness at the end of their lives. They did something maybe that we were taught not to do. Does that mean it's the end for them? The answer is no, no, not really. It depends. It's the mercy of Allah. And this is why we say, don't judge people. Don't decide who is in heaven and who is in hell because you haven't been there. It is the ownership of the most compassionate, the most merciful, the most beneficent, the most forgiving, the most kind. So stop dooming people and cursing them into hellfire. Indeed, their Lord is the owner of heaven and hell, and so is our Lord, but it's not you and I. If Jannah and Jahannam, meaning if heaven and hell was the ownership of you and I, perhaps it would be empty. We are so selfish, we don't even like people to visit us in our own homes because we feel lazy to make them a cup of tea. It's a fact. So imagine if heaven was in your hands, your buddies wouldn't be allowed in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. 
But Allah says, no way, it's in my hands. I will give it to whom I want. And you know what? The more, the merrier. Subhanallah, you will be surprised when we sit and we hear people say, this person's going to hell, that one's going to hell, that one's going to hell. I scratch my head and I think to myself, it seems like heaven is going to be empty, completely empty. Who's going to be in hell? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. You and I will be surprised in a beautiful way to see even those you may have disliked in Jannah, in paradise, subhanallah, because it belongs to the most compassionate, the most merciful. So this hadith says, if you come on the day of judgment with the equivalent of the whole earth filled with sins, if you have not associated partnership with me, I will reach out to you with a similar amount of forgiveness. And that's it. <laughs> subhanallah, subhanallah. So the person didn't seek forgiveness, but they worshipped Allah alone. They tried, they kept trying. I've, I'm always so, so motivated by the mercy of Allah. It keeps us going. You keep trying. Try to do your best. Try to fulfill your obligations. And what did I say at the beginning of this lecture? I said, keep seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Look at the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was spotless, sinless, but he kept seeking the forgiveness of Allah such that the narrations show us numbers on a daily basis between 70 and 100 times a day. He used to say, Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Did he need it? The answer is no. We need it. But we don't say it. A day passes, a week passes. And the worst thing is we look at others and think they will not be forgiven by Allah. But we are perhaps from among those who didn't even seek the forgiveness of Allah. Look at the devil playing his dirty tricks. Don't allow that to happen. You want the mercy of Allah? Be merciful upon others. The same Prophet of Allah says, لا يرحم الله من لا يرحم الناس. Allah will not have mercy upon he who does not have mercy on the rest of the people. So if you want the mercy of the Almighty, you must be merciful towards the rest of the people. Notice him saying الناس, the people. He did not say المسلم, just the Muslims. You should be merciful towards all of the creatures of the Almighty. That is a teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. People today totally misunderstand the message of Muhammad sallallahu Do you know why? Because we are not leading our lives in an exemplary way. That's why. And do you know what? The same Prophet of Allah, may Allah's peace and mercy and blessings be upon him. You know what he says? Subhanallah. That Prophet of Allah speaks about the mercy of Allah. And he says, Innama Allah will have mercy upon those from amongst his worshippers who have the quality of mercy in them. If you have the quality of mercy in you, you are merciful towards all those around you, you definitely deserve the mercy of Allah. Allah is most merciful. Thereafter, if a person has passed away in a condition, perhaps that may not have been favorable, perhaps they may not have sought forgiveness of Allah. May Allah never let that happen to us. Remember, it's between them and Allah. Allah may look at a deed that they have done that was so beautiful that he would actually give them paradise based on one deed and forget about the rest. But Allah says, you try your best, you make sure that you try your best and do not associate partners with me. Worship me alone. And this is why as Muslims, we always teach not, that we should not be taking risks in acts of worship. Don't render an act of worship for anything or anyone besides he who made you. And he whom you are going to return to who happens to be the same deity who is called the worshipped one. In the Arabic language, Allah. It's a name of him of his that he has chosen in Hebrew, they would say Elohim or Eloha. It is the one and only, the maker, the creator, the nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one in whose hands lies all existence's control, the control of existence, the one whom we're going to return to, him alone. If, you've if you have tried through your life 
to, to worship him alone and you've tried to obey his instruction, you've tried to be the best possible person you could, this is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying to you, have hope in Allah. Don't worry, you're heading in the right direction. Yes, Allah knows of the challenges that you and I are facing. The environment may not be sinless. It may be sinful at times. There may be people stealing, pinching, deceiving, cheating, etc. all around us, such that it becomes a norm for some people to do that. But you as a believer, keep yourself away from such actions. Don't cheat people, don't deceive, don't involve in sin, don't do that which will displease Allah. And keep seeking the forgiveness of Allah. That is the remedy. We meet in Jannatul Firdaus. We will meet in paradise if we keep trying in that direction. My brothers and sisters, as much as the world is filled with gloom today, hopelessness is being marketed all over. We need to start marketing a little bit of hope. And we need to tell people, you know what? You're not a bad egg. You're not a person who is far from the mercy of Allah. You just stumble over across that which is good. You do that which is good because someone encouraged you to do good and you're on the right track. You must feel good about yourself. And in the process, the same should be the feeling regarding others. No matter how far someone may appear from Allah, trust me, it's a moment that can actually change all of that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and I'm repeating this for the third time because of its importance that if you were to die, still there is a lot of hope for you, subhanallah. There is a lot of hope for you. For as long as you have not associated partners with me already, we will tick the boxes. You can, by my mercy, enter into paradise. Don't we always teach people saying that entering paradise shall only be by the mercy of Allah. Because no matter how many deeds we have done, who knows how good those deeds are. We are praying today, a Friday, we are fulfilling the obligation that we have on our shoulders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But trust me, the concentration levels will not be 100% with any one of us. Perhaps the maximum of the person who's got the least distractions in this beautiful house of Allah may possibly be 85 to 90 percent. There is nobody that can say I was plugged in 100 percent. So what happens to that 10, 15 percent of the best of us? Trust me, for as long as you have tried, Allah says, don't worry about the rest. I've taken it on. Tick. Subhanallah. Did you try? Yes, I did. Some might fluctuate right to the bottom, 10, 15% concentration. To them, we will say, keep trying, don't lose hope. Because what the devil does, he makes you start thinking that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. So it's not valid. So next time, don't even bother praying. That's what's happening. So in that case, we've fallen into the trap of the devil. Don't let that happen. The mercy of Allah is something that should make you learn that the units of prayer are not needed by Allah. They are needed by us. Allah just needs you to try to do your best. Look, when you have to make wudu and ablution, when you have to make wudu and ablution, if you cannot do it with, your, with water, you're allowed to do it in a different way. Why? Allah is trying to tell you, that's not something that's going to benefit me. We're doing it for you. Are you going to obey our instruction? If you really cannot, don't worry. We'll downgrade it for you. We'll make it easier for you. When you give a child an examination and you say, what is 1015 mul multiplied by 2305 and they're taking too long, you can tell them, well, just tell me what's one plus one. They say two, say tick, here's your prize, right? That's what happens to us. The hadith says, if you cannot read salah standing, sit and read. What if I can't read sitting? Well, lie down and read. Subhanallah. Why did Allah keep downgrading it to show you? Hang on, it's all about my mercy. Allahu Akbar. And I can go on and on and on to prove to you that Allah is more merciful than the statements made by one another showing mercilessness across the globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his goodness. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Build others and pray that on the day of judgment, Allah has mercy on all of us. Don't ever doom someone to hell because hell does not belong to you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه جواد كريم